I would like to call um, the PAHCC board to order. It's Wednesday, June 9th, and it is um, 6 p.m. Um, board members, I'm going to call your names out, and if you wouldn't mind introducing yourselves. Kim? Uh, Kim Farnham from New Haven, the community large member for the Mount Abraham School District. Steve. Uh, Steve Ernie from Starksboro, uh, the Mount Abraham Unified School District representative. Christina. Hi, everybody. Christina Macklin, North Ferrisburg, and I'm Madison Northwest School District representative. Lorraine. Lorraine Morse, one of the two Addison Central School District board reps. Missy. Missy Beckwith, Workforce Investment Board. Um, Dana? <clears throat> Dana Peterson, Superintendent, Director, Tishrae Hannaford Regional Technical School District. Jay? Sorry, uh, Jay Stetzel, Assistant Director, Patricia Hannaford Career Center. Um, wow, every time somebody talks, the screen switches. Austin? Austin Haynes, business manager. Um, and would our guests like to introduce themselves? I'm going to attempt to um, get everyone. Um, you missed David. I missed. Oh, sorry, David. David. David Roberts, adult ed coordinator. Sorry about that, David. It's OK. Uh, Woody, would you like to start introducing yourself? Sure, Woody Danforth, Connery Arts Instructor at the Career Center. Gretchen? Gretchen Bailey. <laughs> Denise? Denise Sansack, um, Adult Ed, Administrative Assistant. Eric? Who was that, Suzanne? I didn't catch you. Hey, sorry about that. I'm always a little bit yeah, with my fingers there. Hi, Eric St. John. I'm the uh, director of the Addison Repertory Theater Company. Thank you. Amanda? Amanda Payne, education support personnel at the Career Center. Jake? Jake, we're in an engineering architecture, computer science teacher at the Career Center, resident of Cornwall. Brenda? Brenda Logie, school counselor at the Career Center. Penelope. Uh, Penelope Wade, resident of Virgins. Um, Kelly. Kelly Mills, sustainable agriculture teacher. Nick. Nick. I Nick. Uh, Nick Cantrick, construction technology teacher, resident of Shore. Thank you. Alti? Ultima Danforth, human services instructor at the Career Center. Thank you. Lisa? Lisa Rader, design and illustration instructor, Middlebury resident. Aaron? Aaron Townsend, Natural Resource Instructor at the Career Center. Thanks for having us. Hayden. Hayden Thompson, Automotive Technology, Waltham resident. Thanks. Um, Alyssa. Alyssa, uh, Rittendale Student Support and Program Assistant, New Haven resident. And I apologize for saying your name wrong. Alan. Alan Pulsifer, maintenance assistant at the Hanford Career Center. Um, did I don't I, know if Judd, Judd came and in. And I, I would just wanted to make sure I get all the staff because I saw a judge appear. So right if I didn't miss any staff, then Judd. Uh, Judd Markowski, resident of Bridport, with member. Uh, yeah, I think that's all of it. Okay. Thank you all. 
Um, this is Wendy Pratt, IB and curriculum coordinator. Oh, sorry. That's okay. Not to keep track of. Janice? Hello. Can you introduce yourself, please? Hi there, Janice Bosworth, um, retired agriculture instructor for uh, Trisha A. Hanford Career Center. I miss anyone because as people speak, the screen shifts. So I'm not trying to purposely miss anyone. I'm trying to keep up my shifting screen. Hearing none, may I have a motion to approve the agenda, please? So moved, Judd. Second, Lorraine. It's been moved and seconded to approve the agenda as written. Uh, is there any discussion? Hearing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor, please say aye or raise your Zoom hand. Aye. aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion's passed. Do we have any um, comments from our visitors tonight? If so, Can I have um, the floor, please? Uh, Jay, you were first and then Aaron. Uh, yeah, thanks, Suzanne. Um, I just wanted to uh, let you all know that uh, I made a mistake in not letting Nick Cantrick know to uh, possibly join us last meeting when he was approved as our new construction technology instructor for next year. So um, he's with us today um, and I think may, may want to say a few things about uh, joining us. But yes, congratulations to Nick and, and uh, apologies to uh, not alerting him to join us last month. Thank you, Jay. Um, Aaron, you had a hand up? Yeah, I did. I hope everybody can hear me okay. Good, okay. Make sure I'm not yelling or not muffled. <clears throat> Good evening, everyone. My name is Aaron Townsend, and I'm the Natural Resource Management Instructor at the Hanford Career Center. I'm joined tonight by many of my colleagues and I'm speaking on behalf of my fellow 18 members of the Hannaford Career Center Teachers Association. Over the last year and a half or so, the district has done a comprehensive assessment of our schools, buildings, and grounds. Correcting issues in our physical buildings will make way for healthier and more effective learning spaces for our students and strengthen our school for years to come. We applaud this work on the part of the board and the superintendent. As I'm sure you'll all agree, the culture of a school is as important as the buildings themselves. It is our sincere hope that you review the health and the needs of our school culture with the same kind of prudent, comprehensive process that you apply to the review of our school's physical needs. For the last three years, the staff has publicly and privately raised concerns to the school board and the superintendent about the dire state of morale at the Hannaford Career Center. As you know, we recently presented you with the results of the school climate survey conducted by the association that shows how the faculty and the staff rate the director's performance as an administrator, as our administrator. We asked to qualify, we, when asked to qualify the climate and morale at HCC, this is what the staff had to say. Poor, extremely poor, the lowest it's ever been. I've worked in this school for 13 years and have never seen morale so low. In all my years as an educator at PHCC, I find the morale at an all time low. The lowest it's ever been, it makes me very sad. Morale is on life support in district leadership, including the board has known for years. 
the responses to the survey show that we have a real problem at our school. We've tried repeatedly to help Superintendent Peterson to understand the reality of the situation described in the survey and to propose solutions. Unfortunately, he has proven incapable of seeing the situation for what it is. If you're unable to recognize a problem, then you're ill-equipped to develop solutions to the problem. And the problem is bound to get worse as it has for the past four years. At this point, we don't know what to do. We need your help. We're appealing to the school board to take action and propose a path forward to improve the health of our school. We need the board to thoughtfully review the survey and the impassioned comments provided by the staff. Following this review, we ask you to report your findings back to our school in wider community as you reported your findings regarding our school's physical plan. We, the staff at the Hannaford Career Center, look forward to hearing to the board's response to this request. We trust that the school board has the faculty, staff, and students' best interest in mind and ask you to take our concerns seriously. We're available to offer any additional perspective regarding the issues facing our school. We want the best for our students, their families, and our community. We believe in our common goal, to have a healthy and thriving school. Thank you. Once again, I'm speaking on behalf of the faculty and the staff at the Hannaford Career Center, appealing directly to the school board. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your audience and consideration. Thank you. And so Aaron and teachers, my only response that I can give to you in public session right now is that the issues you have raised um, are related to an, an employee who is the only employee of the board. And as such, is, we view this as a personnel matter and we will take it up in executive session. Um, and if we, and when we are ready, we will say something outside of executive session, but since it's a personnel matter, that's where we have to take care of it. But we thank you for bringing it to our attention. I can ask one quick question, which is a, a matter of public. What uh, would you, I believe it is, would you mind please telling us what the terms are for the director's contract, when it's up, what, when it runs to, et cetera, the span? Um, Austin, I might need your help on this. I believe it was renewed last year for two years. I believe that's correct, Suzanne. I, I don't have it in front of me and I can double check the terms and get back to you and Aaron on that. Um, but it, I believe it's a two year, it's renewed annually with a two year commitment in mind when factoring in the transition period of a position like a superintendent. Um, but I'll have to confirm the exact terms for you. Right. Thank you. And I Thank believe we you. renewed it last year. So that's why I'm not sure on the exact date time. Thank you. And I just, again, thank you for your consideration. And we don't need to wait for board policy. We are here and ready to chat with any board member should you have the interest to speak to any of the faculty at the Career Center. We would welcome you at any moment. Thank you. Thank you. And again, it is it's related to personnel. So that is, um, and he is our only employee. So that's why we have to discuss it in executive session. Lisa? Thank you. I just would like to um, also let the board know that in the scope of the survey, it does discuss the wider climate as a whole and uh, our school as a whole. And I would like the board to be able to deliver their assessment of our school climate to our community. 
like what, what you see, how our school is doing, just as you, we saw how our buildings are doing, what shape does the board feel that our school community is in? Thank you. Thank you. And I'm trying to listen to you and take notes so that please don't think that my head down is mean that I'm ignoring you. I'm taking my minutes. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other comments? I think I now have you all on one screen. I don't see any further hands raised. So I'm going to uh, move on. And thank you all for your comments and your thoughts and your input. Um, correspondence, do we have any, Dana? I don't have any public correspondence. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the minutes of May 12th, 2021 and May 25th, 2021. Was there any concerns? Okay, Missy, do you have the um, accounts payable to read them out, please? Yes, I do. Are you ready? Can we ready. ask that somebody, somebody's got their mic open, I think, There's some background noise. Alan, it looks like your mic is on at the moment. Uh, expenditures for uh, June 9, 2021, building and equipment reserve, $3,600. General fund, $277,046.19. Revolving fund, $3,993.54. Makery grant, no expenses. Payroll for May 21st, 2021. $89,288.96. Payroll for June 4th, 2021, $88,403.12. Thank you, Missy. You're and welcome. thank you for stepping in um, to review them with Nick being out of town. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Um, policy 2.4, financial planning and budget. Is that you, Austin? Yes, it is. Um, so this is a quarterly policy we review, uh, obviously, four times a year. And I'll just read it as it states and try to summarize as succinctly as possible. Um, I apologize as this is a, a little bit um, mundane. So if I'm droning on, feel free to uh, interrupt me and uh, get me off the, the mun mundacity. Um, so the policy reads, the superintendent shall not cause or allow financial planning for any fiscal year or the remaining part of any fiscal year to deviate from the board's approved budget, risk financial jeopardy, or fail to be derived from a multi-year plan. Um, and then it states further, there will be no financial plans that risk incurring those situations or conditions described as unacceptable in the board policy 2.3 financial conditions and activities. Um, so in short, there were no violations of that policy. Um, which is summarized uh, by looking at our spending within budget parameters, repaying debt, interfund transfers, and tax payments. Uh, so the second piece is there will be no financial plans that omit credible protection of revenues and expenses, separation of capital and operations items, cash flow, and disclosure of planning assumptions. Um, so there are a couple of paragraphs here. Um, essentially, they talk about our internal financial controls and how we allocate and code revenue, how we're tracking cash receipts and deposits, how we separate out capital, capital expenditures. Um, there's a brief section about our purchase order system, uh, our cash flow monitoring, and usage of our line of credit. Um, so on the line of credit, we do have some documents, which I'll discuss later, um, but we'll get to that next. And then the third section is, there will be no financial plans that provide less for board prerogatives during the year that is set forth in the governance investment policy. Um, and essentially there have been no uh, um, violations of this section. That's all I got. Are there any questions? Are there any questions from the board for Austin? 
Seeing no hands raised, may I have a motion to approve policy title 2.4, financial planning and budgeting? So moved, Kim. Second moved by Doug. Kim. Was there a second? Sorry. Yeah, second by Judd. Seconded by Judd. Is there any discussion on the motion to approve policy 2.4, financial planning and budgeting? Hearing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor, please say aye or raise your Zoom hand. Aye. aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion's passed. Uh, Austin corporate resolution. Yeah, this one is relatively straightforward. There are a few documents included in the one attachment in the board packet, but essentially we have an annual renewal with our line of credit. Um, we reached out to the national, or sorry, the um, People's United Bank for a comparison and there was no, uh, essentially no comparison in terms of the terms and the uh, conditions of the line of credit they were offering to us. Um, so we've decided to continue on with the National Bank of Middlebury it's a one year line of credit for $1,135,000 at an interest rate of 1.1%, which is very competitive. Um, essentially, we use our line of credit in anticipation of revenues coming in from the state uh, towards the end of the year. Uh, so late November, December, and then throughout the early stages of the winter. Um, and essentially in the summer months and early fall, we're at a cash flow deficit, so we need to pull on the line of credit to pay operating expenses. Um, so these are essentially just renewal documents that the board needs to um, review and authorize. The first one is the secretary certificate that Lorraine just um, essentially states that she and the board accept the terms of this line of credit and spells out uh, the business manager and the, the board of director chair, uh, which is used as in. Uh, the next document is the actual municipal note, which spells out the 12 month term, the principal amount and the interest rate, um, as well as some bank conditions about the borrowing and if we were to default on the loan. Uh, and that is signed by you, Suzanne, at the very end. The next document is the uh, non-arbitrage certificate for uh, tax anticipation borrowing. Um, which is a little bit more legal language around the terms and conditions of the line of credit. Um, as the banker, uh, as our contact at the, at the Bank of Middlebury explained to me, it's essentially um, making sure that we're not investing the, the principal to, to um, make any gains. It's just using it purely for operating expenditures. Uh, and that again is, is signed by you, Suzanne. And the last document is just a tax form for the, uh, it's a, it's a tax exempt government bond certification tax form. Um, and that is something that I can sign off on on the end. Okay. So that's so, our line, of, that's our line of credit. Right. And this is something we do every year. So there's nothing different about this. That's right. Correct. Austin. Yeah. <clears throat> it's an annual operating procedure. So I would be looking for a motion to um, to approve the borrowing of the sum of one million one hundred thirty five thousand and no dollars to be borrowed from the National Bank of Middlebury effective July 1, 20, 2021 with the principal balance plus accrued interest shall be due no later than June 30th of 2022. Would someone like to make that motion, please? So moved, Steve. Steve's made the motion. Is there a second? Second, Missy. Missy has seconded. Is there any discussion on the motion? So hearing and seeing no raised hands, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor, please say aye or raise your hand. Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion's passed. 
Austin, when do you need our signatures on this by? Uh, before July 1st, um, so okay. I can coordinate that with you and Lorraine um, and take it from there. And I okay. guess I should I should clarify too while we're on public record that we did get a competitive proposal from Peoples and we have a very positive relationship with them. Um, we, we have accounts with them, but uh, the terms and the rate were, were not quite as favorable with as with the National Lake in Middlebury. So just wanted to put that out there. Great, thank you. Lorraine, your hand's still up. Did you have anything else you needed or? Your Zoom hand. <laughs> it is. I don't see my Zoom hand up. Well, it's down now. <laughs> okay, I never put it up, so I'm not sure, but whatever. Okay. Um, policies for action. We have two policies. And oh, our policy chairperson's not here tonight. Judd, do you want to take this on? I can try. Um, let me just try to find, I've got the agenda up. I'm just trying to get, come on now, trying to get the actual policies up in the interim. Uh, which, the financial planning and budgeting, the 2.4, or wh which policies are they? So the two policies are from the policy committee, the board meetings, and then the public participation of board meetings. Yep, I'm just trying to find them right here so I can actually speak to them. Judd, would you like me to start off and you can chime in? That would be great. Thanks, Dana. You're welcome. Uh, so the two policies that the Budget and Policy Committee have reviewed and actually presented last month for uh, initial reading are uh, board meetings, agenda preparation and distribution, and public participation at board meetings. <clears throat> so the first one is uh, board meetings, agenda preparation and distribution. And uh, that uh, document is the exact same document that you received um, last, last month, with some highlighting perhaps removed and the uh, links available for uh, the VSA citation so that uh, on the web, somebody could click on the, uh, the link and it would be an active link and it would go to the uh, actual uh, citation and statute that uh, supports those provisions. Um, other than that, there is no uh, change. The cross references, legal references and doctor references are mentioned at um, page two of your um, policy. So uh, that has been reviewed, I believe three times now by the budget and policy committee. And uh, I'll let uh, Judd chime in at that point in terms of uh, further recommendations or highlights that he might want to. Uh -huh. Yeah, um, I we went over these, as Dana said, a few times. Uh, they've been batted back and forth. We had some discussion on them. There were very few changes. Um, and then we went on to public participation at board meetings. We had sort of a round and round on that a couple of times as far as how to um, interact with people who are in public comment and if that should affect the agenda that follows. Um, and we eventually realized that it would be pretty complicated to adjust an agenda based on public comment at the beginning. Um, so it would have to be going through proper channels to come up at a next meeting. But again, very few changes to it, if any, a um, couple of little formalities for our career center. Um, but uh, yeah, it's all stuff that everybody has had access to before. And um, I think that's about it. Any questions directly that might help spur me on to an answer here? Lorraine. Oh, okay. Oh. Yeah, and Jed, it may have always been this way, but I was noticing um, under the public comment on agenda items, it said the number of people mm -hmm. wishing to speak is low. The board may authorize the chair to use a speaker list. So if is that saying, um, you know, if we see, uh, for example, if we were in person and a number of people showed up as they did online tonight, um, would we have to authorize the board chair um, if she wanted to have a speaker's list? Um, 
or would I mean that's what it sounds like so if um I'm just one I, I I don't remember seeing that specifically that we have to authorize the board chair to to use a speaker's list that makes it sound like the, we have an option of saying no they don't want a speaker's list you know just whatever you know, that's funny. I never did read it exactly that way, but I can totally see where you're coming from. Um, I guess when I was reading it before, uh, I was just thinking it would mean that in this case, Suzanne, if she wished to bring forth a way to plan for this many people to speak, we could, you know, we could approve it. We could uh, agree with it or not, uh, depending on how much was going on in that meeting. Uh, but, you know, I didn't really think about it as an authorization. It was more just like board discussion, but that's a very good question. And I don't necessarily have a very good answer to it. Okay. I think I can chime in Lorraine if um, you would like. Yeah. The uh, What that does is normally the chair is responsible for um, conducting the meeting and establishing who uh, is participating. But if there's a large list, I believe that it is the body's responsibility to decide how uh, how that will be managed. And so authorizing the chair to implement a list would allow everybody to sign up and uh, be allocated a certain amount of time to be able to speak because it may take up more than uh, more time than the board would be able to dedicate at any given meeting. And so there may have to be a limitation and that limitation would be imposed, I think by the board by authorizing the chair to keep that list. That's, right, but would we authorize her at the specific meeting or would we just make it yeah. a blanket authorization? No, I think it would be at the meeting to authorize the list if there were, if there were 60 people who wanted to speak. Okay, well, I'm, okay, but I was just thinking you'd have to do it at the beginning of the meeting. Normally, if you're going to have a list and there's that many people, you'd want to get it started, I would think, before the meeting so people could be signed up and it would be ready to go. Um, this kind of slows down the process if we have to vote on it at the beginning of the meeting and then people have to start signing up. Uh, I think that the way it usually works, Lorraine, is that if people are coming in and there's a large number and the, um, the, the board recognizes that maybe many of those people wanna speak, that list can be set up um, in advance and the chair can move something around on the agenda to uh, allow that to take place because okay. there's no way that you would necessarily have advance notice of how many people wanted to speak. Okay, so you could start the list even if we haven't yet voted to do it by list. You could. Okay, all right. Yeah, if, all they right. Want to, if they wanna speak, if there's something that is a topic that they want to speak on because the chair actually has the responsibility of saying what is uh, appropriate for comment during a, uh, a board meeting and what can be discussed and what not. But you always want, the board always wants to provide the public with an opportunity to uh, to speak and be heard uh, related to topics either on the agenda or not on the agenda. And the board chair is responsible for uh, overseeing that. Right, no, definitely. And, and I agree, I always want the public to be able to speak. In fact, I, I, I get uncomfortable sometimes when we start limiting how much time. I mean, I know when there's a lot of people, sometimes they'll say you only have so many minutes and I am sometimes uncomfortable with that because I want people to be able to say what they want to say, um, but that's not specific to this so okay that's that's fine thanks you're welcome are there any other comments or questions and if everyone's comfortable i would like a um a motion to move these forward for warning at our next meeting for These were already warned, right? That's correct. They were warned in May. This is the uh, action meeting. This is the actual adoption. Yeah. Okay. Excuse me. So I need a motion to adopt. So yep. move. Oh, I Chad, somebody... did you just say something? Sorry. Yeah, I think I was talking over somebody though, but I, I was just going to move that we adopt these two action items, but I think somebody else was already on it before me. Okay, um, so there's been a motion to adopt, and maybe it was Steve and Judd that moved to um, adopt and seconded. Maybe they did it both at the same time. So that's what I'm going to say, Linda, for the minutes. 
is that Judd moved and Steve seconded to adopt, move to adopt public participation at board meetings and um, the board meetings agenda prep and distribution. So A20 and A21. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none and seeing no hands, um, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor, please say aye or raise your hand. Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion's passed. Um, next is staffing for FY22, and we have medical professions and other. Dana? Or Jay? Or whoever? Nope. Yeah, that's that's fine. Uh, we have one. We do not have any anything under other, so there will be no additional uh, request for appointment other than medical professions. And uh, we would like to uh, bring forward the name of Jennifer Baker uh, to fill the medical professions position uh, for next year. You have a copy of her uh, resume. Uh, in your packet. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Uh, it seemed like a pretty robust resume and it, I didn't see any red flags there. Does, is there, uh, Lorraine, is that your? Yes. Dana, um, in the past, uh, first of all, is, is this person, I, I get confused because we've had people leave and people being long-term subs. Yep. So who is currently in that position? She is currently, Jennifer Baker is currently- Okay, that's the, what I thought. Long-term uh, substitute. Okay, and in the past, do we normally, is an LPN normally the people who have filled that position as opposed to like an RN or, I mean, what are the credentials it, normally? It can vary from center to center, uh, uh, but an LPN is qualified to be able to fulfill the, um, the responsibilities um, of, the, of the medical professions instructors. Yeah, pretty much. And have they been LPNs in the past as opposed to RNs? Or have we I, I can't comment on that. The last person that we had was an RN with a master's in public health. So I just um, got Dana, back wait a minute, please. Can I ask people that um, to make sure their mics are muted? Um, it's really hard when there's other conversations going on. Thank you. Okay, so so there's no no advantage necessarily to having an RN person filling that role. An LPN is adequate, not adequate, it's not the right word, but is can provide all the Yes, most of the focus is around clinical, um, clinical uh, rotations, and an LPN can absolutely provide the clinical supervision for uh, students to be able to complete those rotations as part of um, an LPN training. Uh, each center can deter determine what the content of the uh, medical professions training is. And so there is no statewide requirement for a particular position. Um, you could have someone who was, say, had EMT credentials potentially uh, doing that. They, however, might not be able to do supervision in a clinical setting in a hospital. I don't know. That's just a, a conjecture on my part. So it would depend on uh, what your uh, program consists of, but Jennifer can meet uh, the requirements for the clinical components. You do not need to be an RN to do that. Okay. Are there any other questions? Jay? Thanks, Suzanne. Um, I did remember to talk to Jennifer about joining us tonight, um, but she uh, regret regrettably was not able to, so she may join us uh, uh, next month. Okay, thank you, Jay. Any other? Seeing none, we'll, I'll ask for a motion to approve the hiring of Jennifer Baker 
for the um, lost my agenda here, sorry. For the medical professions um, position for staffing FY22. May I have that motion, please? So moved, Kim. It's moved by Kim. Is there a second? Kent, Missy. It's been moved by Kim and seconded by Missy to approve the hiring of Jennifer J. Baker for the medical professions position for FY22. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor, please say aye. 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 <laughs> aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion's passed. The next item on our agenda is summer meetings for July and August. Um, I had asked Dana to put this on here because sometimes we've taken a month off and I wanted to know what the board was thinking. Um, the other thing that I, uh, when Dana and I talked about this, we were wondering about, you know, people's comfort with when the AOE allows boards to meet once again in person if we want to like have the first meeting in person with public on Zoom and then um, bring in the public after we've had a chance to get used to being in the same room together. Um, I know it's, I've heard people making comments about how weird it is to walk into the grocery store and not be wearing a mask. Um, <laughs> different scenario here. So, <laughs> but I'd like to know what the, the board's thoughts are about July and August. I'll go first if nobody else is yeah. up. Uh, this is Judd. Um, I'm very happy to return to meeting in person whenever it is deemed safe and responsible. Um, I think I'm probably one of the younger members, so therefore the latest to the vaccination. And as of today, I'm two weeks out of my second shot, um, which I feel great about. So yes, I will be thrilled to go back to in-person as soon as the rest of the board or however many people wish to be part of that. Thank you. Anyone else have any thoughts? And the other part of the, the scenario is, do we want to have a meeting both in July and August or do we want to try to take a breather and skip a month? Missy, I think you... Uh, and Dana might be able to answer this. So, um, and I can speak to it when we get to the informational uh, section on the facilities committee, but there may be an expense coming up that the board needs to approve from the BRF. So meeting in July may be worthwhile. Dana, have you heard any more from the AOE about school boards coming back to meet in person? Uh, the only thing that I've heard is that when the uh, governor's um, state of emergency is uh, lifted, then there will be no more uh, requirements uh, on uh, schools for um, meetings. And that is expected to happen uh, when we reach the 80% mark that has been um, announced on the news. Okay, Missy, you have your hand up. I think Missy wants to say something. Yeah, I just um, wondered when we go back to in-person, will there be the option for visitors and or board members to still join remotely? Yes, because that is part of public law. And I think your volume keeps, uh, is reduced for some reason. Doing that weird thing again, I gotta have my computer checked. Either that or it's my internet connection way out here in Bridport. Um, thank you. Thank you, Missy. Is there any, uh, Christina? Um, this is a question for Dana or whoever might know the answer. Has the AOE said anything about when the public can start to join us again, do we have to monitor the, like if you're unvaccinated, you're required to wear a mask situation? I'm just, is there gonna be guidance about that? 
the only guidance that we have, there hasn't been any uh, additional updated guidance. It uh, was from the uh, Safe and Healthy Year issued back on April 8th. Uh, and uh, there were guidelines that were in line with the uh, Department of Health uh, regulations. So it's number of people per um, area vaccinated versus uh, unvaccinated. When the state of emergency is lifted, however, uh, there, there is no longer any authorization by, uh, for the uh, AOE to issue that type of guidance. So it's going to be uh, best practices. At least that's what we were last told uh, at last week's um, uh, briefing from the Secretary of Education. Are there any other questions? Any? Steve. Yes, yeah, so I think the, the question was that Missy raised was whether or not, um, you know, if we're sort of going back to quote unquote normal after the emergency um, action is lifted, was there previously a way for board members to attend remotely? Dana? Uh, yes, there was. There's a statutory provision that allows for remote participation by board members uh, to be okay. able to at your, okay. your quorum. Uh, and that was mostly via conference calling, but with new technologies developed, there was also a provision for allowing that. So uh, board members can participate uh, remotely and be part and participate in the part of the, All right. uh, be part of the quorum. So I don't think, my understanding is that's not going to change. Uh, so th that will still be um, uh, available uh, should the need arise. And isn't, Dana, correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't part of that statute that someone, at least one person has to be in the room that um, if they say A208, there has to be at least one body sitting there, everyone else can be on camera? Uh, yes, in, in fact, you are right, uh, Suzanne. So um, you can conduct, there is a provision for conducting electronic meetings and there are very specific guidelines around that. Um, but that, that's where that provision comes in, Suzanne, and that someone has to be present, doesn't have to be a board member, but someone has to be present in the public meeting, uh, usually some representative of the organization, to be able to uh, facilitate uh, participation by people uh, in person. And so then that, that space would be connected to that remote meeting. Right. So the only two things that I wanted to add was one, um, I would love to have a break in July and August. Um, as I'm currently doing five to seven of these meetings a month at the moment. Um, and uh, I think the Zoom tool, although we have lots to not like about it, I think, I know it for Mount Abe, it has drastically increased participation by the public. And just because of its ease of use and the ability for people to pop in to the meeting. So having it available as a tool going forward, I think is a great thing regardless of you know how we do the rest of the meeting. Missy, where'd you go? There you are. Do you um, have any idea as to which month you might need an authorization from the BRF? I would say July for sure. John's working on some prices and it's um, relates to issues with the fire alarm system. So we can't delay repairs. It has to be done. And that goes back to the building audit that was done and uh, repairs that will need to happen. And currently when things break, it will be done in an emergency situation. Um, and right. so we're starting to see that. Okay. And perhaps it could be done electronically. Okay. Is there a way that we could in advance approve a, a not to exceed if somebody had an order of magnitude number? Uh, we've done that before, but in this situation, the number there's, there's a broad range of numbers. So I wouldn't want to do that right now. All right. You also have uh, additional items such as some uh, staffing that might need to be addressed as well. So um, I, I think that uh, Missy's uh, choice might be a good, good one. Uh, you can also do a special meeting and uh, call that with, um, uh, with uh, sufficient notice. It doesn't have to be scheduled, but that, 
scheduling it now gets it allows everybody to get a meeting date on their calendar. Right. Lorraine, was that your hand up? Yeah, Christina also has her hand up as well. Okay. Oops. Yes, this time my hand is up. The other thing that I was wondering about meeting this summer is, um, Missy, the uh, email we got from John about um, wondering if we're still going for a March Bonvo and wanting things nailed down in the project before September. So if that's the case, we definitely will have to meet this summer, right, to talk with the board about, won't we? I, I will need to read that email. I have not read that email yet, but if the contractor is saying that we need it nailed down by September, then absolutely. Yeah. Uh, my interpretation was that the um, <clears throat> contractors are looking for the items that need to be included uh, in that so that they can get more up-to-date uh, up pricing for the, uh, for the fall. But it, to your point, Lorraine, it probably would be good to have um, something put in front of the board so that they would know what they were right. getting back in terms of information. Christina? No, I my question got answered, thank you. Okay. <laughs> so I'm gonna leave it up to one of the board members to make the motion then on um, summer meetings for July and or August or what your pleasure is because you you have both all been kind of all over the place. Lorraine? I, I would move that we schedule meetings for July and August. If we don't need them, we can cancel them, but at least everybody will have them on their calendars. So if we do need to meet, you know, as many of us who can be there will be, will be there. A second to that motion? Yeah, Judd, I'll second that. Okay, it was moved by Lorraine, seconded by Judd, that we schedule a July and August meeting. And if necessary, we can cancel, but at least we have dates on the calendar. Is there any further discussion on that motion? The only thing that I would say, uh, Suzanne, is that as you and I had discussed, there are some events that are happening. Uh, during the summer that might actually <clears throat> require a change in the uh, normal meeting date for those for those two months. So um, that would be either the first or third um, Wednesday of both July and August. And people can pick <clears throat> about which would be more uh, convenient. And it doesn't have to be the same for each month. Right. Okay. So if there's no further discussion, um, I'd like to um, proceed to vote on the motion. All in favor, please say aye or raise your Zoom hands. Aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Motion's passed. Um, Kim, can you um, start the informational agenda, please? I've got to, Mike's looking for the link, so I gotta send Mike a link. And Suzanne, is there a date? Is there a Wednesday that we want to go along with that motion of having both a July and an August meeting so that we can publish those? Is there any way you could do a doodle poll for that? Yes, I'll do a doodle poll or we'll do a doodle poll. Great. Thank you. As soon as we know, we'll publish them. So I believe we have all of the reports that were sent to us listed below. And um, does anybody have any specific questions for any of the people that sent in the reports? Lorraine. I'm sorry, I'm kind of hogging the thing tonight. And I'm not sure if this is actually considered a report, but the um, newsletter that we get, um, I, it's awesome. And I wanted to share, and I keep saying I'm gonna share it and I forget. And so today I was like, I'm gonna to send that to our ACSD board, but I couldn't figure out 
how to do it. So maybe that's just, uh, I mean, is there a trick? I tried doing the links, but I, it didn't work for me. So how do I share that with other people? Um, Lorraine, you should, yeah, you should be able to copy the link that I sent and, and just send that to, do you have, do you have the whole board on a, uh, yeah, like a group I, email or I mean, I tried copying link and it didn't, it just said link and it didn't do anything. So I was like, am I doing something wrong or is there a trick to this? Maybe I can talk, I don't want to, you know, I, maybe I can talk to you, Jay, later about it. Sure. I just, yeah, I just, I wanted to share it with, and I wanted to put it on my Facebook page. But I just couldn't figure out how to get it on there, okay. so I'll, I'll yeah, talk. Yeah, we, we can figure it out later. But it's it was excellent. Thank you. I really enjoyed. Yeah. It. No problem. Again, a lot of contributions from faculty and staff, which which makes it all the all the more helpful and informative. Lorraine, I think that used to be linked right to um, all the sending schools, and you know if that's a comment you want to make, and you know make sure they go and do that because I know when I opened the Mount Abe one. You know, it'll have information about Hannaford on there. Oh, okay. So you can Maybe. go ahead and check that and see if, in fact, that happens. But sometimes, like at Mount Abe, they'll pull things out of that notice and let them know, like, you know, the horticultural information, where to buy plants, that kind of thing, or if there's an open house or whatever it is. They've been pretty good about doing that. But um, that's a good way to check and see if in fact is, because I remember years ago, it wasn't, and it wasn't a big, you know, revelation to IT to do it. It just hadn't okay. been linked, so. Okay, thanks, Kim. Mm -hmm. The, the other thing, question? and actually, sorry, Kim, I, I haven't ahead, sent Jake. it out to the schools yet, because we were adding stuff from the National Technical Honor yeah. Society uh, ceremony on Monday, so I'll be doing that. Um, the other thing is, we'll put it on our website. If you go on the front of our website, you'll see It'll say it says May newsletter right now, but it'll say June newsletter. So you could always give people the you know just our website address and tell them to just click right on the you know the newsletter uh, button there on the front page. Is that put on the Facebook page too? Yeah, it will be. Good. Jay, do you have the emails for all the different board chairs? I don't. So uh, that is another way. If somebody wanted to share that with me, I'm happy to send it to each each board. Chair. I have John's from uh, Addison Northwest because I'm in Addison Northwest, but uh, I, I don't have the others. Right, because I think if you if you ask them to distribute it, that would be a good way to get board attention. Sure, I'm, I'm happy to send it because I sent it out to the you know the principals and others at the schools. I can just add you know the board chairs onto that that uh, group email. So I do want to say thank you for all the reports because it really clues us all into what's happening at the schools and I appreciate learning about that every month. Um, and second, in Addison Northwest, I actually do a monthly report to my board and I include uh, almost all the links to all the reports that you guys have been sharing monthly. So, and that gets posted on our website as part of the minutes. So it's, it, it, it's, I, I am doing that, Jay, so you don't probably need to send John. You're good. Thanks. Steve, is that happening in Mount Abe also? Do you give no, kind I of think maybe I should get on the call? Christina's showing me up there. <laughs> yes, sorry. We're required to do written reports for all our committees. So it's just made made uh, streamlined everything uh, for everybody. So yeah. But it's been a great way to really share all these links to all these reports that I see here monthly, so. Any other questions? I don't have a question, but I would like to um, uh, highlight a couple of things that are appear in my report. I wanna thank Wendy again for uh, making her contribution to the uh, report, which hopefully you, you saw I referenced in my report, the update, but she took the time to actually uh, do that, do that report, which um, saved me considerable um, effort, and I appreciate that. And she's doing a very good job coordinating. So I'd like to thank her for that. And if she has any comments, uh, I'd like to give her an opportunity to uh, say something because that's relatively uh, new having someone else submit a report. So if Wendy has anything, and then I have one more after that. 
Uh, not really anything to add, just that there's great momentum going into the summer for our program, and we hope to submit our uh, application soon after school starts in the fall. Thank you, Wendy. And uh, uh, the second is I'd like to recognize uh, Nick and the tiny house team. I have a small article in there that he wrote. Uh, with a picture from the uh, from the crew, that that project is still under uh, underway. But if Nick wanted to say a word or two, and uh, Elisa works in that program as well, so I'd like to also recognize her for uh, her work uh, with reconstruction tech students and uh, all of the fine work that they've been doing and the recognition that they received uh, from the um, from the clients uh, back at the end of May. So if uh, Nick wants to say a word or two. You can uh, take a moment. Sure. Uh, thank you, Dana. Um, I'm, I'm sporting the hat. I don't know if everybody can see it. This hat was given to us. Our class by Maggie and Brad to check out their new home that we're building. Um, so our <clears throat> right now we are um, working on putting the roof system together uh, and then it will be able to be wheeled outside for summer storage and then next fall we uh, are working with our second year students to do the interior finishing um, part of the puzzle and our our new goal is to have it delivered to their um place their their site down in east dorset uh by uh, around thanksgiving or next year so it somehow i don't know uh and i'm happy to an answer questions if if people are interested in particularities of the project Nick I'm going to make the assumption it's that been you are documenting everything and would at some point be able to share that with just about anybody that might be interested in seeing the process yes uh time lapse camera that we set up each day and you know it's it's funny in in the building there's not um a whole lot of action except for very certain times when there's a big visual change um so i have a lot of editing to do as well <laughs> i'm sure to get that video ready but we are we're taking photos and we're taking video as we go along Thank you. Anybody else have a question? Board members? Suzanne, how are you? You all set now? I see Mike's name up, but. We have Mike in the meeting. <laughs> no yeah, face, I, but I see I'm his name. I'm on a meeting with Judd too. I'm trying to end that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. oh, well, we will learn before we all quit Zoom. <laughs> um. If there's no more questions around any of the reports, um, may I have a board member, whoops, we have uh, anything other on the other related to board operation. Is there any comments there or things board wants to see in the future on the agenda? Okay. <clears throat> nope, okay. Um, Judd, would you like to take a stab at policy 4.1 governing style, please? Okay, um, I'll give it my best shot. Um, we're a little bit over schedule, uh, which is unfortunate, but there was a lot of information and that was nice. Um, it was a, we sort of skipped through the board reports, but those were beautifully written. And I think that it speaks to the fact that there sort of weren't a lot of questions left hanging, so that's good. Um, 
yeah, and uh, everybody's getting good at muting. And like you said, we'll all be really good at this Zoom thing by the time we're done with it. So uh, thank you to everyone who participated this evening. Thank you, Jed. Dana, um, question, are you moving us into a room for executive session? Uh, that's entirely up to you. I can do that if that's what you would like. Um, because you also have the board training, uh, which is uh, just a private uh, meeting, and that will happen after the executive session. So whatever your preference is, I can uh, move you, or uh, you can use that other <clears throat> other link for uh, executive session. It's entirely up to you. Um, The, the one thing is, is that when we come out of executive session, since this is open meeting, yep. um, we'd have to come back to this meeting. So it would be easier if you put the board into a room. I'll do that right now. Um, so while you work on that, could I have a motion to go into executive session for negotiations and personnel for the two state statutes? So moved, Kim. So moved by Kim. Do I have a second? All right, second. <laughs> <laughs> it's been moved by Kim and seconded simultaneously by Christina and Judd to move into executive session for the purpose of negotiations and personnel for the would, two state statutes. Who would you like uh, to join you? I would like the board and you, please. Okay. No one else? Nope. Okay, let Thank me just you. read off to make sure that I have uh, everybody. Um, so right now I have I have Judd, Kim, Lorraine, Nick. Oops, wrong Nick. Uh, Judd, Kim, Lorraine, Steve, Suzanne, and I lost some people. Judd, Kim, myself, Lorraine, Missy, and Mike. 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 They're, not, they're not listening. Yeah, I'm, if I'm here. Am I there? All right, look like. Mike. Mike, Christina. I've got Mike. Um, I don't see. Okay, I've got Christina. Um, Do you I have Steve? Everybody. Steve, I think, is already assigned. Yep. Missy? I've got Kim, Christina, Lorraine, Mike, Steve, and Suzanne. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, Missy. Two, three, uh, I've, I've lost Missy somehow. Is she still in the meeting? Um, I don't see her in the meeting. I don't see her. No. Okay. Maybe I should turn the meeting over. Maybe I should make um jay the host then while we go in that'd be great thank you okay all right i'm okay. headed to room one yeah and i'll wait to see if missy comes back maybe suzanne you can text her do we need yeah. a vote oh i think we've already we had the motion and we'll vote on it in executive session because most people are already gone Jay, are you there? Jay? He's lifting his Sorry, thumb. I am here, sorry. I thought you saw my thumb, but maybe not. Uh, I can't, nope, I can see you now. I'm gonna change it, give you the hosting um, temporarily so that okay. I can go into that other meeting and somebody can be here. Um, and then you can you can any, anybody in the meantime if they're waiting. Do you need me to put you in the room, or are you already? Uh, you might need to put me in the room. Okay. All right. So you're going to be the host. There we go. And Aaron will want to get in after that. Room one, Jay.
Is everyone coming back or are we saying goodbye? Hi, David. Hey, Gretchen. How are you? How are you? Great. Hugs. Hugs to you. <laughs> So David, they, the board will come back at some point. Um, and if they have, if any decisions were made, they will report on those, but otherwise they will come out and end the, the regular meeting and um, then they have a board retreat they're going to. So it's up to you if you wanna hang out and see if anything comes out of executive session. Thanks, Jay. Yep. So may I have a motion to authorize the board chair to sign the contract for workplace solutions? So moved, Kim. Moved by Steve, Kim, Steve second. seconded by Mike. Um, is there any discussion on that? <laughs> Seeing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor of the motion to authorize board chair to sign the contract for workplace solutions, please raise your hand. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion's passed. And then um, the other piece is I'd like a motion to authorize the board chair to reach out to VSBA for recommendations um, to, conduct, to conduct a professional climate survey. Moved, Lorraine. Lorraine moved it. Is there a second? The Steve has seconded, it's been moved and seconded to on the motion to authorize board chair to reach out to VSBA for recommendations um, to conduct a professional climate survey. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor, please say aye or raise aye. your hand. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion's passed. Um, that ends this portion of the meeting. Could I have a motion to um, adjourn and then we'll do our board training. So moved, Kim. Second. Moved by Kim, seconded by Steve to um, adjourn. 714. Is there any discussion? All in favor, Linda, say are aye. You saying uh, What's that, Lorraine? Is Linda staying for the retreat part or no? Oh, no, yet. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, and reminder board, um, please use Dana's Zoom link that he sent. It only works if you go to Zoom. If you go to Google Meet,